All right, in our last video, I didn't have my window uh, pulled up quite enough, so I had to rewrite the problem. So I tried to go back and fix that for this next video here. All right, so again, we're, we're working on trying to figure out what these fractional exponents do for us. And if I'm going to evaluate or figure out what this is, 27 to the 4 thirds power, I just don't recognize um, fractional exponents as well as roots and radicals. So perhaps we should change this back over. Remember, the denominator is the index. So this would be the third root of 27. And then the top number is the power. Now I could either write the power underneath the radical or I could write it outside of the radical. Either way is the exact same thing. Now with this one, I'm going to write it outside just because I can take the cube root of 27 very quickly. In fact, the cube root of 27 is 3, and then I could raise that to the fourth power. 3 to the fourth power is 81. Now, sometimes you'll run along situations where it's actually easier to do the power first and then do the radical. It just depends, and the more of these you do, the, m the more quickly you'll be able to recognize perfect squares, perfect cubes, perfect fourth powers, things like that, but it does take a lot of practice. All right, let's work just a couple more examples here of what we can do with these uh, rational exponents, or fractional, rather, fractional exponents. Okay, here we have a problem that says the cube root of x cubed plus 4 times the 6th root of x to the 6th. Now, in this problem, we are going to assume that our variables are positive so that we don't have to deal with the absolute values. Technically, I would have to write this one as an absolute value. So, but because of the directions that are given um, in this part, we're just assuming that this is a positive number. Therefore, remember that cubing and cube rooting are opposite operations of each other. So the cube root of x cubed would be x. Now I want to look at that really quickly also. If we were to rewrite this, let me do it this way. If I were to rewrite this as a fractional exponent, this would be x to the, remember your denominator is your index, the numerator is your power. So do you see that 3 over 3 is really 1, which would just simplify to x. Plus, here again the same thing. Our radical and our exponent will, our index and our exponent here will cancel each other out because they're opposite operations. Again, because if we were to write this as a fractional exponent, this would be 6 over 6, which is 1. So this would be a 4x. And now we can continue to simplify. x plus 4x would be 5x. All right, now here we have one more. Last one. It looks really complicated, but it's not. In this one right here, we have a negative exponent, which means this is in the wrong position. It does not belong in the denominator. It belongs in the numerator. So if I rewrite this as negative 9 to the 3 halves power plus 27 to the 2 thirds power, now I've corrected the negative exponent. And then if we rewrite these using radical notation, this would be negative this fraction is only affecting the 9. This would be the square root of 9 cubed. So the square root of 9 cubed. Plus, this would be the cube root of 27 squared. Now again, remember we can do this in any order we want to. It would be easier for me to take the square root of 9. I know what that is more quickly. So the square root of 9 is 3, but I still have to cube that. Plus, here again, I can take the cube root of 27 easily, because I know what that is. That would be 3 squared. So now negative 3 cubed would be negative, oops, 27 plus 3 squared is 9, and negative 27 plus 9 is negative 18. You have to go by all of your exponent rules and the radicals one at a time.